Welcome to another episode of Exploring Possibilities in some very interesting times. And we have a timely guest to talk about specifically some practices to help right now, especially for those that are in service to helping others. Much more will be covered. I'm glad that you're joining us today. It seems you've got more time to listen these days, so be sure and check out some of the back episodes. Our entire library is available for you at journeyofpossibilities.com. All 250 interviews, so I'd love to have you check some of those out. Leave us some feedback. We are available on many of the popular players, including Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and be sure to rate us so others will find our show. If you'd prefer to watch on YouTube, we have got the audios on YouTube so that you can listen to those there at youtube.com slash Cheryl Sitz. And joining us in just a moment, Alfred Ritchie. You know, this is a great time for you to get your technology in order while you're sitting around having time to kill. And Mario Rosales is here. He is busy. Some people are not working right now. Mario is busy helping people get ready for the new year, get their social media in order. Maybe you've been thinking about launching a podcast. Great time to talk to him about it. You can find him at MarioRosales.com. He's easy to work with. He turns tech speak into English or Spanish, and I think you'll enjoy connecting with him. He's also got this great new product called Astro Fractals, so check those out, MarioRosales.com. Now for today's guest. Alfred Ritchie, you may recall his work with Hans King, and we have had Hans King on the show in the past. That is how I got to know Alfred, and I'm delighted that he's joining us today. He has lived kind of a a couple of lifetimes so far in this one, and now he dedicates himself to serving others by sharing what he's learned during this extraordinary life. You can find out more about him online at alfredritchie.com. That's A-L-F-R-E-D-R-I-C-C-I.com. And he joins us now. Hi, Alfred. Hi, Cheryl. Thank you so much for having me on today. I'm so glad that we get to connect in this way. And we talked about doing this for a while, but what better time to come together and talk about mindfulness and resilience than with what's going on in the world today? Absolutely. This is a time where so many people are fearful of the unknown and mindfulness and spiritual practices really can help so many. They can. So give us a little bit of background info for those that aren't aware. I hope through my show and many other shows, most people are aware of Hans King and maybe know you through that. But you had a whole lifetime even before you connected with Hans. So give us a little bit of your backstory, if you will. To summarize what happened was Hans found me when I was at my absolute lowest. I had my suicide planned. Spirit brought me to Hans. And Hans walked me through my life, unraveling the mess that was created. I so much believed, as so many other people believe, that what happens to you, your experiences define who you are. And Hans helped me realize the simple fact that, no, those are just simple things that you need to let go of so that you can become who you are. And Hans and his practices that I now hold so dear and have dedicated my life to sharing with others helped me let go of two group homes, two foster homes, shelters, going to six high schools in four years, Uh, being an abused child, 24 years of drug abuse, compound all of that with uh, working so hard to prove that I deserve a good life with an MBA, a career in international banking, working in over 20 countries. Mm -hmm. I was going in so many different directions. And by the time I got to Hans King, I didn't understand who I was. I didn't understand if I was a banker. I didn't understand if I was an international traveler. I didn't understand if I was an abused child. And through the practices that so many of you may know through Hans King, I became happy and peaceful for the first time in my life in my late 30s, early 40s. And now I've dedicated my life to saying, I don't care what you've been through. I don't care how horrible it was. If you work the practices, I don't care whose practices, I don't care what they are. If you do the inner work, 
you can become unbelievably happy. I, I totally agree with you. And I think what's, what's coming up for me right now around the timing of this interview is that the world is slowing so many people down for maybe the first time in years, if ever, because so many of us are being asked to step back from our daily lives and be alone more, isolate more. I know when you and I met at, at after Hans King's Remembrance, we talked about how easy it is to identify that I am what I do when we're not conscious of anything else or lose ourselves in what we do. So for many people, this may be just the time that they need to hear that there's so much more than just what they do or where they've been. Can you speak a little about that? Absolutely. That is a phenomenal point because so many have already been or will be laid off. I cannot tell you how many people I know personally that are being laid off. They're talking about being laid off, going on unemployment. That is a great time to work the practice of you are not your title. You are not your job. So the practice is, spiritually speaking, you bring yourself who you are, your gifts, your desire to be of service to your job. And by going within, following whatever spiritual practice you decide, you can discover who you are, what your unique gifts are, what you want to do in life, what you were born with. And then you can turn it around and say, look, this is who I am. Where in the world can I be of service? Where in the world can I help people with my gifts, with whom I am? Who do I want to share who I am to? So if you're at home, and even if you're still working, you can still turn this around from for example, many of much of my life, I was a banker. I opened by saying, hi, I'm a banker. The misery that that brought me, the pain, the suffering that it brought me that I was a banker. Instead, you can say, look, I am a person who wants to serve and I serve those through financial services, whatever it is. But you put yourself first. And if you're at home this is a good time to switch that around from defining yourself by your title, defining yourself by your job, and instead going within and defining who you are from within and saying, this is how I wish to bring myself to the world. This is how I wish to be of service. That's excellent guidance. And it kind of tees into the next thing that I see coming up for people because I have been a lot on social media. I'm very connected with people in the ways that I can be while I am. I've chosen to withdraw because I just came home from international travel when all this kicked into high gear. So I wanted to kind of isolate myself so that I don't inadvertently pass along something even being asymptomatic. So I've been on social media a lot watching people's stuff come up. And one of the things is, who am I if I'm not out racing around doing all these things? And the other is, this time is rocking everybody to the core when it comes to where is my security? Where is my stability? What's going on in the financial world right now, which I'm sure you're aware of? What, what kind of words can you say to people that are feeling that intensely right now? Absolutely. That is a phenomenal point. Now, I'm not religious. I'm spiritual, which means I believe there are many spiritual teachers, many spiritual texts. I believe you can receive guidance directly from God, from your guidance, from the spirits that watch over you. However, I just bought my girlfriend a book called Jesus Calling. And in the book, it says over and over and over again, I am your guidance. I am your abundance. I, uh, I understand your life. I understand why you came to earth. I understand what you wanted to experience. I am the one who's going to be guiding you through whatever it is that you're going through. And what I realized when no matter 
where you are in your spiritual journey, no matter what text that you're reading, no matter what you follow, you have a choice. And the choice is to look outside of you to determine where you should go, what you should do, how you should react, or you can have faith, trust, and belief in your guidance, in the universe, in God, in Jesus, I don't care who. Do you have faith that the universe, spirit, is watching you every single moment of every single day, and all you need to do is trust and follow what they give you? Now, those are two separate practices. The first is have immense faith, trust, and belief. That is the foundation of a spiritual practice. You may not understand what to do. You may not understand who you are. You may not understand what exactly is spirit. But do you believe there is something more? Do you have faith that the universe is there watching out for you? Do you trust that what they can bring to you is better than what you in your tiny little mind can figure out. That's the first choice, is to believe that they, spirit, can have a better outcome for you. Now, the second part of that is learning how to receive messages, because if you trust that they're going to be guiding you, if you trust that spirit is sending messages from God, if you believe that your guidance is there to guide you. The second part of the equation is, how do you receive that guidance? How do you receive that mess those messages so that you can follow their advice? And that's where intuitive development, automatic channeling, automatic writing comes into play. Those spiritual practices open you up to receive the messages that spirit is giving you. There was a survey a while ago that said uh, that by far the majority of people in the U.S. believe that everyone has at least one angel. And if you go into the dictionary, every single dictionary will say that an angel is a messenger of God. Well, okay, great. If an angel is a messenger of God, we have to put in a little bit of effort to listen to listen to the messages, to listen to the guidance, to and eventually have faith, trust, and belief that what they're telling us is the best thing for our lives. Now, I'm coming to you from an extremely personal standpoint because I remember so many times in my life where I just said, I might as well end it. I might as well just say, there's no way I'm getting out of this hole. There's no way my life is ever going to get better. And spirit came to me with a message and completely turned things around. I'll give you one quick story. I was living in a group home, 15 years old. Of course, what are you going to do? You're going to go out partying, drinking, doing drugs, whatever it is that kids in group homes do, because you got nothing else to do. You got no parents. And one day spirit came to me and said, go home. I, I said, I'm looking around and I'm, I'm like, there's nobody around me. I'm standing in the middle of the street. The other guys that I'm out partying with, they went to the next party already and I was ready to follow them. And spirit said again, go home. I said, OK, I don't know why. I had no idea. I followed spirit's advice, went to sleep, got up the next morning. There's the two kids that I went partying with in handcuffs being escorted out the door. One of the social workers came to me and put his arm around me and says, you were on that list to be taken away to juvenile detention. Why didn't we? Because you came home before curfew and we decided to give you a second chance. That's a pretty powerful story. And throughout my life, I have noticed when there were huge changes, huge, that took me from living in a group home to going to private high school, going from private high school to going to college, from going to college to getting an MBA, from getting an MBA to living overseas in Europe and working around the world. Every single time spirit came with me 
with a message and I trusted, I heard, and I followed. That is why I was successful. Yes, I busted my butt when I had work to do, but my life would have gone a completely different direction. I may not even have been here speaking with you if I did not listen and follow their guidance. All the way back to your original question, if people are freaking out about the markets, if, if you've lost your job, if you've been, I don't know, had your hours reduced, if you're freaking out about what's going on out there, I'm telling you the most important thing you can do is ignore what's out there and instead focus on your guidance. They know what's best for your life. They're the ones who are going to provide miracles to get you through this. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm so gratified to know that you are particularly positioning yourself to help those who help others, because there are a lot of people on the planet right now that have come here to be in service to humanity, to the ascension, to whatever's going on in the world right now, whatever language you want to put around that. And we get burnout like nobody else. <laughs> Those frontline people right now are getting burnout. How can you help them? That's a fantastic question because right now during this virus, the people who are on the front lines, the first responders, the doctors, the nurses, the EMTs are absolutely burnt out of their mind. They're being called to do so much. So much of this social distancing is specifically so that we don't overstress the healthcare system. Well, it is overstressed. It really is. And those doctors and nurses and EMTs and anybody else, victim services, teachers, social workers who are stressed, I have dedicated my life to being of service to firstresponderresilience.com. Again, firstresponderresilience.com. You can get through it through alfredritchie.com is specifically dedicated to providing mindfulness and resilience practices to first responders so that they can be of better service to their clients. My question that I came up with when I was creating this is, who's taking care of the first responders? Who's teaching them how to take care of themselves? Who's helping them with their burnout? Who is teaching them how to let go of the trauma that they face every single day? First responders, doctors and nurses, and anybody who's a first responder deals with more stress in a single day than most of us deal with in our entire lifetime. But the problem is that even superheroes need love. Even superheroes need to take care of themselves. So what I'm going to do now is give you just a couple of practices for anybody who's in a very stressful job, but specifically for first responders, social workers, teachers, about how to let go of the stress that you deal with. The first exercise is to understand that what's happening out there is not who you are. The results of your efforts are not defining who you are. What happens out there, what the person that you're helping is going through is not who you are. What you have experienced is not who you are. That's called secondary PTSD, vicarious trauma, compassion fatigue. All of that means is that because you are on the front lines helping people who are dealing with nasty stuff, sometimes that nasty stuff comes and affects you. So many times you'll see videos or stories of first responders saying, I can't get those images out of my head. The first step in letting go of that stuff is to realize that's not you. That's what you experience. Experienced. And in spirituality, the most important thing is what is inside of you 
and letting go of those things that are not you, letting go of your experiences, letting go of your traumas so that you can go back to being you, peaceful and happy and of service. So again, the first step is to realize that you have a choice. The first choice is that what is out there, what you have experienced is not you. It does not define you. It is what you have experienced. So you can say things to yourself, okay, I couldn't help everybody, but the fact is, look at all the people I did help. Look at all the people I did help. You can focus on the people that had problems, or you can focus on all the good things that you've done. The question is, where are you focusing? And in trauma, so many times we focus on the one time something went bad, the one time something went sideways. So the very first practice is, no, I'm a good person. I'm a superhero. I've dedicated my life to service. Look at all the good that I've done and look at all the good that I will continue to do. Change your focus, as Hans King would say, change your perception to the goodness that you are, your absolute intent and desire to serve and tell yourself that every single day to raise your vibration, raise your energy. I'll take a break because that's just a lot in itself. Does that make sense, Cheryl? Oh, it's such a good strategy because you're absolutely right. I'm involved in social work and I'm involved in, I mean, even life coaches, all of us that are here to help people, we tend to, you're right, we focus on the one that got away, the one that we don't feel like we're reaching. And why would we do that to ourselves when we're not the results? That's not our job. Yes, absolutely. Instead, this is another exercise, focus on your intention. What is your intention? My intention is to serve. I have absolutely good intention to serve. I have absolutely good intention to help, regardless of of what your job is if you're a first responder, a teacher, a social worker, or anything, is your desire to serve. Are you coming from a pure place, from inside? You know who you are. Stop. Focus on that. Tell yourself that every single day. Because the issue is there's only one person in the world that yet you can save. There's only one person in the world you can change. One. Yep. Yeah. So focus on being the best of service you possibly can. Stop. Tell yourself that every single day. Now, when you get to the thing that messed up the one you couldn't save, wait, hold on. Did I do the best job I could? Was I of pure heart? Did I have good intention? Yes. Stop. What happens out there is not your responsibility. It is impossible to control other people's lives. It is impossible to control what's going to happen. If you have an expectation that you're going to save everyone, you're in trouble. So the peace of mind chatter to let go of is the expectation you're going to save everyone because your happiness is dependent on the result. Your happiness is dependent upon fulfilling an expectation. And most of us know one very basic practice in, in letting go of mind chatter is to let go of expectations. When you let go of that expectation, go back to who you are. What are you doing? What is your intention so that you can focus and let go of, for example, if every time the thing pops in your head of the one you didn't save, wait, did I have good intention? Yes. Good. That's it. Yes. Does that make sense, Cheryl? Oh, it sure does. It's a great reminder that their free will is theirs. Just like ours is to be of service, they have a free will choice to be whatever they want to be. And that has nothing to do with what we envision or what we try to do, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's so hard that so many of us who are in service, regardless of how you're in service, 
we get a little boost. We get a little uh, lift when we help somebody. The problem is, is that we get depressed when we don't help somebody. There are so many masters that say, take good and bad as the same. It's just life. If you look at yin and yang, they coexist and there's good and bad in each other. There is always good and bad. The question is, can you be peaceful and happy regardless of what is happening? And in order to be happy and peaceful, regardless of the result, focus on who you are, focus on your intention. That's such a great piece of advice. That right there is worth the whole show. That right there was awesome. <laughs> that in itself will change your life. Yes. Yes, it will. And these are, honestly, those are the first two, 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 first two foundation practices of my day-long workshop that I give to first responders. Now, I give hour, hour and a half workshops away, and I'm going to be giving away free lessons. Uh, I'm just starting them now. We just redid first res firstresponderresilience.com. We're redoing all my social media. And I'm going to be giving away all of these free lessons to you. So you can find us on social media. I guess the easiest is to find me on alfredritchie.com uh, and I'll put links as to how to follow me on social media and to continue to get all of these lessons that I normally bring out to people. But because everything's been canceled, I just had six different events where I was going to be talking to crowds canceled. I'm going to continue to be of service by reaching out through social media and providing the same exact lessons for free, taking people's questions and answering them for free because I want to be of service and help. That's awesome. And you have this great voice for meditations. I loved your meditations with Hans. And I hope that meditations might be a part of this work that you're offering to first responders to be able to come home to themselves and remember I'm not what, what I achieve or what everybody else thinks. I'm who I am. That's a good point is I've tried not to scare anybody with woo woo and tried to be very, very concrete. But I think your audience understands the power of meditations. Uh, affirmations are things that you tell yourself, such as focus on my intention. Meditations help you let go of things, help you connect with your guidance, connect with who you are. So yeah, I will absolutely bring some of that into there. That's great. And I, that's probably the tip of the edge of woo woo that my audience is used to hearing. So you're perfectly <laughs> safe on here. <laughs> I hope we're mainstreaming meditation. Don't you? I hope it's not woo woo anymore. I hope it becomes a way of life for people. Exactly. That's a really good point is I have absolutely focused over the last four years to bring tangible, concrete results to these practices. They will change your life. They will bring you back from the brink. They will help you let go of burnout. They will help you communicate better. They will help you be more peaceful and happy. And you will know that the practice helps bring those results. And it's not just that these practices are meant for you. It's that because you're peaceful and happy, you'll be better of service to your clients. You will be clearer. You will be able to step back. You will be able to be more authentic, more caring, more loving to those people that you serve. So yes, absolutely, a huge part of these practices are about you becoming you and the best you that you can be, but the result is that because you focus on being the best you, you can help those that you are serving better. If you're burnt out and fried, which I absolutely understand, I cannot tell you how many years I was burnt <laughs> out and fried. I, I, oh my God, the stories, <laughs> my peripheral vision was about 60 to 70% gray. It was that bad. I could only see 
such a small fraction because of the stress. How good of service are you going to be if you're like that? Right. If you're that stressed, how accurate are you going to be when you're giving out medications, when you're writing something down, when you're trying to hear somebody? So the first rule of caregiving is take care of the caregiver first. Yes. Amen. <laughs> this is the focus. Is if you focus on giving and giving and giving and giving, how can you give if your teacup is empty? What can you give if you're empty inside? So for all of you who are first responders, caregivers, teachers, social workers, victim services, you have to remember the first rule of caregiving is to take care of yourself first, because then you'll be better able to be of service and better able to help those that you are serving. I like that you touched earlier on the fact that you are bringing these practices into helping us do better in our daily lives to practical application. That is where you and I definitely are in sync. Because to me, if all of this just stays something that we do in the sidelines and it's not got a practical application in life to show up in the world, then we're missing the big piece. I think we all came here to be of service in the world. And to do that, we have to connect with the world. But bringing these practices to play in a way through our daily lives that we can be more present in the world and be more of who we came to be, that is, that's it right there. That's the whole point. So I love that you're bringing the best of the work that you did with Hans and everything that you've done into the mainstream so that we can benefit the most from it. And as you mentioned earlier, also even into personal relationships, because that's another area that I know firsthand tends to suffer if I'm busy being of service to everybody else and there's nothing left of me at the end of the day for my personal relationships. Absolutely. I'll touch on the relationships in a second. One thing that drove me crazy was one of Mahatma Gandhi's sayings is be the change you wish to see in the world. And it drove me nuts. It's like, wait, hold on. I want to be of service. How can I be of service if I'm sitting here focusing on myself? The link is when you have gone in and done the inner work, you'll know when you're ready to be of service to others. And you'll be so much better at being of service to others because you first went inside and did the inner work. So this stuff is so applicable. Doing the inner work is so applicable to your day-to-day -day life because if you do the inner work, you'll be a better superhero. <laughs> yes. Okay. Why? Specifically, resilience. If you let go of all the junk, if you are resilient to what is happening out there, if you understand how to do resilience practices, you can let go of what just happened and be so much more mindful on the next person that's in front of you. You will be clear. You will be able to be authentic, loving, caring because you practiced resilience, because you let it go, because it didn't stick to you. So, for example, I just got a contract helping a hospital, helping the ER and ICU nurses become mindful and resilient so that when they have something difficult that just happened and oh the stories that they told me i i won't get into it but the stories were so shocking and i said great please let me help you mm -hmm. so that you can let it go and then when you go talk to the next family when you go talk to the next patient you do it from a peaceful loving heart and that's the connection about how to bring spiritual principles into the real world is by doing the inner work, you become better of service to help those people and serve those people out in the real world, regardless of what your job is. Now, touching on your second point, relationships. Ooh, that's a hot <laughs> one. <laughs> that is a hot one. Um, Hans and I did an eight hour class about relationships. And if I was going to summarize it in one sentence, an eight hour class on relationships, be the best person you can 
because that is the energy and vibration you will draw to you. So true. Okay. So if you're looking for a relationship, do not look out there. Look inside. Get rid of stuff. Be the happiest, most joyous, loving person you can. Because then that's the vibration that you give out. Reverend Michael Beckwith always talks about this. Is the vibration and energy of what you give out is what is attracted to you. If you're, th if you're a mess and you're trying to find somebody to fix you, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> what you're going to draw to you is a mess. <laughs> I've been there, done that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But yes, uh, not bringing work home. At the end of my eight-hour workshop, we finalize, we end with how do you not bring work home so that you can be a loving, caring partner. This is the end of eight hours of work. The trick is who you are is a big ball of love. Who you are is someone who serves. Who you are is someone who cares and tries to help and tries to make a difference. That energy comes out and you share it with others. And you at work, whether you're a doctor, a nurse, a social worker, a teacher, you give who you are to your job. And then when you're done at work, you're done giving there. You leave that energy behind. You say, I did the best job I possibly could. You get in your car. You do a clearing exercise, a grounding exercise. You leave all of that energy behind. You go home. Who are you? You're a big ball of love. Now you get to give that to your partner. Something that I picked up when I was listening to that is that many of us spent a good bit of our life, and still it shows up probably, at least for me it does at times, giving to the point that we're not replenishing for ourselves. So we feel more empty by the point that we're getting in the car and trying to reset ourselves. So can you speak to that? It's a really tough one because the truth is love is infinite. My girlfriend told me this recently because I call her the biggest ball of love I know. The more you love, the more love you have to give. The problem is that we pick up stuff that drains us. It is not loving that drains us. Loving actually gives you energy. Loving actually makes you feel magnificent because you're drawing on universal energy, God, which is love, which is infinite. So the more you love, yeah, you may feel pretty drained. You and I are going to feel drained because we're giving. All you need to remember is I'm a ball of love. Please replenish me. Please help me continue to give and be a big ball of love so that I may continue to love and serve others and ask the universe to drown you, cover you, Im immerse you, infuse you with love and allow yourself to accept that. The draining part, which is so hard, took me so many years to understand, is when we pick up other people's stuff. When you remember the problems that the people that you were serving had, when you remember the stress that you went through in that day, that's what drains you. That's the stuff to let go of so you can go back to being connected with God, the universe, source energy, which will again pick you up. That's my perspective. It's really tough to, to believe that. Yeah. What do, you, what do you think, Cheryl? Well, I'm just, I know that I'm guilty of, I sure, I let it go. And then somewhere it creeps back in again. And I'm like, oop, I guess I didn't really let that go because there it is again. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> the really letting go versus the, I tell myself I let it go, but it's still in there. Oh, I have a funny joke. I have that in the middle of my workshop. So you got five frogs sitting on a log. One decides to jump off. How many frogs are sitting on the log? Four. No. One decided oh. to jump off. <laughs> Did the frog jump off the log? That's good. 
you should say all these executives are looking at me saying, are you serious? <laughs> I'm like, yes, there is a difference between deciding and doing. Because the problem is, for those of you who follow spirituality, the ego will tell you, yes, we know that everything's covered. Everything is fine. We've decided that that's taken care of. That's ego. Yeah. Okay. Ego decides that you know that, that it's done. Spirituality says, no, let me go into a meditative state. Let me see if there's any, any energy that needs to be removed. Let me do a body scan and see if there's some negative energy in me. Did I use the practice that what's outside of me and the results and expectations are not what's mattered? What really matters is that I'm a big ball of love and I'm of service. And you practice the removal of that energy. You ground that energy. You ask God to take negativity from you because it's not who you are. Oh, I got a few exercises for letting go of nasty stuff. Um, there's those that's meditations again that I'm wanting to buy, yes. to get from you. That's that's some good stuff right there. You're good at those. You help oh, guide us in how to do how those. About we, how about we do one? Let's do one. How about one. we do one? I would love that. Okay. So I want everybody to pick one thing, one thing that's bother, bothering you, one piece of negativity. I don't care what it is. I don't need to know what it is. I want everybody to think of one thing Something that happened, somebody that said something, something that you experienced, and it's just stuck in you. Okay, now I want you to remember what happened, and I want you to remember how it feels. I want you to bring all of that to the forefront. Okay, now I want you to close over your eyes, take a couple of deep breaths, inhale. We're just focusing on the center of our chest. I want you to inhale, feel your chest expand, connect with your heart chakra, and let it go. Now I want you to picture yourself in the middle of a movie theater. You're the only one who's in the movie theater. You're pretty much in the middle of the movie theater, and there's this huge screen sitting in front of you. On the movie screen, I want you to see what happened. I want you to remember what happened. I want you to put it on the screen and I want you to watch it. As you're watching it, I want you to feel, take everything out of you, all of the emotion, all the negativity, all that energy, all that emotion and put it onto the movie screen. And I want you to watch it and feel it. Take all of it out of you and put it onto that movie screen. And when you're finally done, I want you to stand up from your little movie theater. You're watching yourself do this. And I want you to go up on the stage and hold your hand out and have that movie screen fit in the palm of your hand. All of that emotion, all of that energy, all of the experience, all that you remember is in the palm of your hand. It is separate of you. Now, from that place, looking out in the movie theater, with all of that emotion, all of that memory in the palm of your hand, I want you to raise it up to God, the universe, to spirit, and say, this is not who I am. I'm a kind, loving soul. Please take this from me. And make the decision to release it, surrender it, and let it go. And as you ask God, the universe, and spirit to take it from you, I want you to feel it being released. I want you to feel the universe is grateful and happy to take it from you. Feel the calmness as you let it go. And say thank you to the universe for taking it from you. Thank you for working with you. And breathe once again. Now open your eyes. Working with spirit does not take very long. It's do you trust 
and the possibilities. That was excellent. That was very powerful. You see, the ego wants to understand. The ego wants to explain. The ego wants to dissect. It doesn't matter. The universe works on energy and vibration. So you work with spirit based on energy and vibration. That's it. Got some negative energy? Spirit, please take it from me. And it can become that fast eventually. The more you practice it, it will take five, ten seconds to release a bunch of energy that is inside of you as long as you don't analyze it, as long as you don't understand it. You don't need to, you don't want to, because that involves the ego. Just simply say, hi, everybody. I got this ball of energy that's really bugging me. Hmm. Can you help take it away? Here it is. Thank you. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys soon. <laughs> that's a great reset between every single client for a social worker, for a nurse, for a, that, that is an on the go reset exercise. Correct. So part of mindfulness, uh, I actually did this every single time for three years with Hans King when he was passing. Hans lived in my living room for three years in a, either on the couch or in a hospital bed. And every single time he called for me, which was many, many times a day, before I left my office, at the threshold, at the door, I stopped and I grounded and I asked God for the peacefulness to take over my heart and to let go of the previous 2,000 times that I came to serve him and say, let this be as if it was the first time that I'm serving him. Then I would walk over to him and say, how can I help you? That anybody in service, anybody with continuous clients, any nurse, doctor, social worker who has multiple clients every single day can use that reset technique to let go of the previous clients, to let go of what happened so that when you greet the next client, it's as if it's your first client of the day. That's great strategy. So where's the workbook so that we can <laughs> roll this out in our lives, in our daily lives? Where's the workbook? Where's the meditations? Where's the goodies? <laughs> So currently it's an eight hour workshop that I'm doing online and I'm, I've just decided because we're not doing anything in person anymore to take this course, all of the details, all of these med meditations and exercises and put them into an online course. It is coming. So sign up for my email, sign up for my social media and I will get it out to you. But in the meantime, before the class comes out, I'll be giving this stuff away for free. So follow me, you'll get all this stuff for free. And when the course comes out, I'll let everybody know. Excellent. AlfredRitchie.com, Alfred, R-I-C-C-I.com for all of that. And that'll take you to the first responder site as well, right? Yes. Perfect. So that's what you've got coming up. Uh, this has just been wonderful. I can't believe how the time flies. My gosh, we're already out of time and I could just go on and on with you. Thank you for the life of service that you continue and for everything that you did with Hans and everything that you're doing now. It's, it's really amazing to know you and to watch you just serve more and more people. Thank you, Alfred. Well, Cheryl, thank you for your service to humanity. It was, I, I cannot tell you how touched I was that you came out to the service for Hans in Asheville, North Carolina. And I'm very grateful to know you be a part of what you're doing and for you having me on the show. May the universe bless you with whatever they're supposed to bless you with for <laughs> your service to humanity. <laughs> I already am being blessed. My network is, 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 is the greatest gift of all. Getting to, to connect with you all is, is priceless to me. So Alfred, everything that we've talked about, everything that you have shared, do you have a parting thought that you'd like to leave us with today? Trust. Trust. When I go back to the other side, I will have one sentence 
was there anything else I was supposed to do besides trust? It is, for my unbelievably insane, incredible, magnificent, stupendous, phenomenal life, and all the insanity that I've done and been through, trust. Trust in spirit. Trust in God. Trust they're watching over you. Trust they know more than you. Trust they will guide you through whatever it is. Trust they will be there for you to get you through what's happening now. Trust they have your best interest in heart. Trust in something more than you. I love that. Perfect. What a perfect ending for a great conversation. Thank you again so much. And thank you for joining us on the show and listening today. Please let us know what you thought. Connect with Alfred at alfredreach.com and connect with our show. Connect with us on the platforms, our website, journeyofpossibilities.com. Give us feedback and even show us a little financial support so we can keep bringing this to you. And we will see you next time on another episode of Exploring Possibilities.